So let's just get into one of the most interesting things that you've worked on, which was this uh, film. Is it a film? Is it a report? How do we actually uh, classify it? Uh, it's a TV documentary. A TV documentary, okay. Yeah, exorcism. Um, about yeah, about yeah, exorcism. Um, mm. How did you wind up in Argentina witnessing exorcisms? How did you wind up working on this project? And actually, you know what? Before we talk about that, let's show a bit of this. We can show like uh, the opening of the film. We have some cases of, of young people supposedly possessed by Satan. El lunes intenté matarme. Sí. I think he's a liar. I cannot prove it. La presencia de Dios en candela. El fuego de Dios. Now it is happening. ¿Sabe qué? Lo que usted grave es esto. Usted viene a buscar escándalo acá. I'm on a mission to explore the bizarre and potentially dangerous practice of exorcisms. I'll be following Padre Manuel, an Argentine priest who claims to fight demons and cure young people of their psychological issues. When there's a case of schizophrenia, the voices are from inside. When there's a case of obsession demoniac, the voices are from outside. He's famous for his extreme and violent exorcisms, and his viral video of a 22-year-old woman called Laura made him an international superstar. The demon-battling priest is now a regular fixture on TV gossip shows where he chats with celebrities and promotes his school for exorcists. With the power of the church in Argentina, a worry that the Padre's good versus evil routine might attract vulnerable teens I'd expect to see in the care of mental health professionals. Okay, so that's we don't want to give too much of that away. So that's a little bit of a teaser, though, of what um, of, of this documentary, which I wa watch it in its entirety. It's very good. Um, oh, so yeah, you. how did you wind up doing this, working on this? Yeah, well, so I've been making sort of mini documentaries for TV channels for a while. I'd become a little bit obsessed by languages and learning different languages, partly because I was a bit of a show off, I suppose. And I guess British people like Americans are known for not really uh, learning Being other languages. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to be like the person who did it, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. It was like when I was in Spain, thing. I remember a British guy who was like a British historian of Spain couldn't believe that I spoke Spanish because <laughs> I'm American. Well, you guys sometimes speak I Spanish, guess, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah. We, whereas we would, the French is always the one we learn. Right. But um, yeah, so and Spanish was my, my th after French, my third language then. So I was living in Argentina and I was just like, oh, I'm always looking for like, what is a bit edgy? What is a bit different and weird and strange to investigate? And it obviously, whatever I look, whatever I look at can't just be edgy and bizarre because then it's like a, you know, like a Victorian freak show. So you want something that also has some sort of profundity and depth uh, and a different level to it as well. So I was looking for that kind of thing and I kept seeing on TV channels and radio channels, wherever I was in Buenos Aires, as I've been living there for a year or so, this priest um, called Padre Manuel Acuña, who is an exorcist, which already sort of piqued my interest. But then what really got me was how he was on all these TV channels and he was speaking you know, very seriously about demons and what we need to, you know, do to fend off spirits and evil beings on Halloween, for example, like cut seven carrots and do that and mix it with some soup and whatever it was. And how very serious journalists over there, or some quite serious journalists, took him seriously, took him at his word. And he was seen as this very sincere uh, authority figure. So I was just like my natural, you know, I knew he was just talking rubbish and I thought I've got to somehow get to meet him I knew that doing exorcisms and learning to do an exorcism although I don't believe in the paranormal would be a really uh, aesthetically interesting image for a documentary and I thought oh I wonder if I can get to grips with you know exposing something that's going on which I think we did over the course of the film because of his uh, closeness with some of the women that he was exercising so it was just a case of getting in touch with him while I was out there and then a friend of mine called David who's a director we just went and filmed it like in between working and stuff like that so if we had nights off and afternoons off from like other jobs and things we would we just went to hang out at his church and filmed him and it took a couple of years after filming it and editing it and everything to actually sell it to the BBC so so that's how it sort of kicked off oh wow so yeah i don't want to give away too much of the kind of meta story or the intra story that hap that, that exists there's an interesting dynamic between you and the father and the priest hmm. um but it just pr makes it so that the movie is about you know his exorcisms obviously and also about um how he responds to being filmed and looked at critically um yeah 
So how, how were you able to like convince him to do it? What did he think your aims were when you were going in to do it? It was it was easier than you'd imagine because I think watching the film now um, and I, yeah as you say we, maybe we don't want to give away yeah. too much it's still yeah. it's still riveting and I I don't really care anyway if people know I mean yeah oh well if it's up to me then like I mean yeah. <clears throat> he was he was just his assistant is this woman called Paula who he exercised did a big exorcism on she had schizophrenia and other psychological issues and things um, and was Eating sort of being disorders. kept yeah yeah exactly and was being kept with him and he. Uh, it emerged was having some sort of relationship with her. She's like 20 ish. And there's another girl who's 17 and he's like in his fifties and he's, he's a really creepy guy. Um, but to convince him was easy because he's one of those guys who's just, he just really believes in himself, whether he believes in his powers or not, I don't really know, but he had like posters around the church of the film, the exorcist and other like movies with superheroes, but with his face superimposed over those of the heroes and the villains and things. So this is a guy who just, uh, thinks a lot of himself. Um, so when I said, Hey, I want to come and film you, I'm British. And I think I can probably get this to the BBC afterwards. He was just like enamored by that idea. And he, he thought would come along and show how fantastic his exorcisms are and how they work. And the thing is like, whether again, whether he believes in his powers or not, his exorcisms do work. And that was the fascinating thing. They, they do seem to work anyway. They seem to make people feel better through some sort of placebo effect and that kind of thing. And they do get better. So he must've been thinking we were going to show that, which we did and show show these people get better and that was it but the difference was we came back a year later or two years later and we saw that the the people who had gotten better then got dramatically worse and were worse for their experience with the exorcism so 